Dr. Sage here, continuing our conversation on the cell. Everything we've talked about up until right now has been things inside the cell. The organelles are inside the cell. The cytoskeleton is inside the cell. But there are also things that cells make that they then place outside of themselves. Those are called extracellular components. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. Some examples of extracellular components are the cell walls you find with plant cells. Animal cells don't have a cell wall, but instead we have something called an extracellular matrix. And then there are also things called intercellular junctions, which join cells to each other. All right, so we're gonna discuss those topics, starting with plant cell walls. So the plant cell wall is an extracellular structure that is one of the things that distinguishes a plant cell from an animal cell. Plants have cell walls, animal cells do not. But plants are not the only things that have cell walls. There are other things that have cell walls as well. Okay, so prokaryotes, bacteria can have cell walls. Fungus, which is not a plant, can have cell wall. Some protists have cell walls, but animals do not have cell walls. Now, what does a cell wall do? Well, it's a wall. It protects the plant cell. It helps it to maintain its shape. It helps a plant cell to not explode from taking in too much water. Remember in an earlier video, I talked about how the large central vacuole swells up with water. Why does it not keep swelling up and burst that plant cell open? Because the cell wall holds it together, preventing it from being burst open from the turgor pressure, from the water pressure you find inside plant cells. Plant cell walls are made out of cellulose fibers and some other stuff we're not gonna worry about for this course. Now, animals do not have a plant cell wall. They're not a plant. They don't have any cell wall. Animals instead have something called an extracellular matrix. The extracellular matrix is made out of collagen fibers, which you might recall that term, because when we talked about macromolecules, an example of a protein I discussed is collagen. You have also heard about collagen, like this collagen in your skin, for example. Okay, so the extracellular matrix is made out of collagen and some other stuff. Okay, what is the purpose of the extracellular matrix for an animal cell? Well, it helps to support the cell, um, helps the cell to stay where it's supposed to be, and it can't allow the cell to move if the cell needs to move. All right, so for example, this would represent the plasma membrane of an animal cell. This would be outside the animal cell. This would be inside the animal cell. Inside the animal cell, that's where you find things like the cytoskeleton. Outside the animal cell, that's where you find the extracellular matrix made out of things like collagen fibers. Okay, so what is the purpose of this extracellular matrix? One purpose is to keep your cell where it's supposed to be. For example, you want your kidney cells staying with your kidney. You don't want your kidney cells wandering off to hang out with your liver. So how does that happen? You have these proteins called integrins that are embedded in the plasma membrane of your animal cells. Okay, that protein spans the membrane, crosses all the way from one side of the membrane through to the other side of the membrane. Well, that protein on the inside of the membrane, it grabs on, it holds on to the cytoskeleton. That same protein on the outside of the membrane, it grabs on, it holds on to the extracellular matrix. So the cell, what this integrin protein is doing is it's holding the cell into place by holding on to the cytoskeleton and the extracellular matrix, and it's preventing the cell from moving. Now, cells do sometimes need to be able to move, especially during early uh, embryonic development. Cells are moving from one place to another. In that case, that integrin can let go of the extracellular matrix, move the cell to where it's supposed to be, and then reattach the extracellular matrix. All right, so those are some examples of the, what the extracellular matrix does for animal cells. Now, there are also things that join cells to each other. Those are called intercellular junctions, okay? And there are different types. The types we're gonna talk about is plasmodesmata, which is for plants, tight junctions, desmosomes, and gap junctions, which are for animal cells. All right, so recall that plants have a cell wall. So this would represent plant cells here. So this kind of gray area, those are the plant cell walls. And it's great because it protects the plant cell, okay? But there's a problem. The problem with the plant cell wall is plants need the ability to take things from inside one plant cell and pass through to inside the neighbor plant cell, to go from inside one cell to inside the adjacent plant cell. 
However, you just built this stiff, rigid wall between the two plant cells. So how can things get from inside here to inside here? Okay, how that happens is there are little tunnels through the plant cell wall, which are called plasmodesmata. The plasmodesmata, a lot of things go from inside one plant cell, pass through the plasmodesmata to inside the neighbor plant cell. And this allows plant cells to pass things like water or small solutes, some, some small proteins or RNA molecules, sugar, things like that from inside one plant cell to inside the neighbor plant cell. So that's plasmodesmata. That's for a plant. Now for animals, there are three types of things that join animal cells together. So let's say you have two animal cells here and you want to take their uh, plasma membrane and attach them to each other. So those animal cells are stuck together. Okay, well how can that happen? Well, one way is through something called a tight junction. What a tight junction does is it takes the plasma membrane of two animal cells. So let's say this is a plasma membrane right here. This is another plasma membrane right here, okay? And it joins them together, like it seals them together. And it seals them together very tightly. That's why it's called a tight junction, okay? So, what the tight junctions are is your toilet paper. So your job is to go get and start playing with some toilet paper. Okay, and as you're playing with your toilet paper, most likely what you have is two ply toilet paper. What that means is there's two sheets of toilet paper attached to each other. Okay, and those two sheets of toilet paper, if you look at the side, there's a good chance there's a quilted pattern on them. And that quilted pattern is what's holding those two sheets of toilet paper together very tightly. Okay. That is your tight junctions. The tight junctions, they actually look like a quilted pattern, like you can see on your toilet paper. What does it do? It joins the two plasma membranes of the two animal cells together very tightly, just like the two pieces of toilet paper are held together very tightly. What this does is it prevents anything from passing in between the two animal cells. Nothing can slip in between these two animal cells. Even water can't be passed between the two. So that's a tight junction. The next one is called a desmosome. What a desmosome does is it takes the plasma member of two animal cells and it joins them together, okay, but only at one spot. So what the desmosome is, is your blue genes. Okay, if you got a pair of genes on, look at where the denim of the pocket meets up with the denim of the pant leg. What you're gonna find there is a little metal rivet. That little metal rivet, that's like a desmosome. It's attaching the two pieces of denim of your pants together very tightly, but only one at one spot. You can still take your hand and slide it in between the two, put your hand into your pocket. That's what the desmosome is doing. The other one is called a gap junction. A gap junction, again, takes a plasma member of two animal cells and joins them together. The difference about the gap junction is there's a tunnel through the middle of this gap junction. What that does is it allows things to go from inside one animal cell, pass through the gap junction to inside the neighbor animal cell. In other words, gap junctions perform similarly to plasmodesmata. Plasmodesmata are the tunnels through the plant cell walls. Gap junctions are the tunnels through the animal cell plasma membrane. Those are the extracellular components, the things that cells make they then place outside of themselves. Things like the plant cell wall, the extracellular matrix and animal cells, and then the things that join cells together, like tight junctions, desmosomes, and gap junctions. And this concludes the series of videos where we learn the basics of this cell. So until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.